Anybody that lives in California is well aware of the big one. It's the large earthquake that's projected to hit the Golden State at some time in the future. Scientists have said it's more of a question of when and not really if. In fact, seismologists estimate that there is a greater than 75% chance that an earthquake with at least a magnitude of 7 will hit California over the next 30 years. Some have suggested it could be as high as 7.8. To give some perspective, 7.8 is the same size as the devastating earthquake that decimated parts of Turkey and Syria in 2023, and it killed over 50,000 people. It should be pointed out that a major reason why the Turkey earthquake was so deadly is that many buildings near the epicenter were built out of materials unsuitable to withstand such a force. While California buildings and structures are better designed to take the impact of such earthquakes, it would seem that there's still more to be done to be fully prepared. And while even the most thorough preparations can definitely reduce the cost of lives, the overall effects of a major earthquake in the LA area will be catastrophic. Before we look at what's likely to happen when the big one hits, let's quickly look at why Southern California is so prone to earthquakes, especially large ones. Time for some geology lessons. The Earth's crust is hard and it is firm, but it lies on top of the Earth's mantle, the Earth's interior. The mantle is essentially solid, but convection currents occasionally cause it to move. This breaks the crust up into thick plates, otherwise known as tectonic plates. These tectonic plates move relative to one another, sometimes passing or sliding over one another. However, when the plates come into contact and are unable to progress easily, then you guessed it, that friction causes pressure. That pressure causes earthquakes. The Northern Pacific Plate and the North American Plate are two huge tectonic plates that come together as the San Andreas Fault. When the two plates meet and bump at this fault line, friction builds up and inevitably causes seismic activity, or earthquakes. If it was in the middle of nowhere, it wouldn't be such an issue, but the San Andreas Fault lies bang smack dab under America's most densely populated region, Southern California. It stretches from Cape Mendocino in North California all the way down to near San Bernardino in LA, covering over 1,200 kilometers. The fault began forming over 30 million years ago, but residents of the greater Los Angeles area are more concerned with the immediate future. Namely, what will happen when the big one hits? Well, it won't be pretty. The damage from a major earthquake in this part of America won't be immediately destructive, but it will probably also bring long-lasting after-effects. First of all, the earthquake is going to cause the ground to shake and move violently, bringing down power lines, breaking open gas pipes, damaging electric wiring systems. That'll set off a massive series of fires, which will merge, creating even bigger and more destructive fires. Making matters worse, roads and bridges are almost definitely going to crack, and some will literally sink into the Earth's basin. Water pipes will crack open, causing flooding in some areas. This isn't only dangerous for anyone in the vicinity, it will also prevent or at least delay emergency services from being able to help badly affected areas. While most office and apartment buildings in Southern California have been built with materials designed to withstand earthquakes, it may not be enough. A quake triggered by San Andreas is likely to bring long-lasting shakes which could cause even safely designed structures to collapse immediately. Another danger is very real possibility of landslides here. When the land shakes a lot, it upsets the natural balance of the terrain, and it causes masses of debris and rocks to plummet downwards. Landslides become even more ruinous when the earth is dampened after rainfall or seriously dry. Southern California's recent struggles with drought make the threat of earthquake-induced landslides very real and very serious. A considerable number of people in the LA area live in the hilly regions near the city. Landslides would almost certainly destroy these houses and properties. California's worst earthquake thus far was in 1906, when around 3,000 people are believed to have died, with a further 250,000 being left homeless. If, or when, the big one does hit, the potential for damage and destruction is much higher. This is mainly due to increased and condensed populations. Experts have put the likely death toll at around 1,800, with at least 50,000 people being injured, although this is believed to be a conservative estimate. This is the immediate projected damage. However, the implications for the future are far more serious. California's population is just under 40 million, and the Southern California area has 23 million people. While a projected fatality toll of 2,000 might seem light when compared to that population, the economic and the social damage would be catastrophic. California has the world's fifth largest economy. If an earthquake of a 7.8 magnitude or greater hits, the state would probably never be the same. Researchers have projected that the damage will cost at least $200 billion and the impacted area may be unlivable for a long time. The basic infrastructure that cities rely upon could take over a year to restore. Greater LA will most likely suffer from damaged or destroyed telecommunication lines, power grids, 
water supplies, sewer systems, bridges, and roads. This may force Californians to simply up and leave, moving interstate and never to return. The economic impact on the U.S. economy and subsequently on the rest of the world could be dire. If you're from California, this may sound like a doomsday movie, but don't go selling your house just yet. It should be pointed out that this is the worst possible scenario. There's still plenty that Californians can do to prepare for the big one. For starters, California could do a lot worse than look at other how earthquake-prone countries have acted proactively towards minimizing as much damage as possible. Japan is renowned for being a major center of seismic activity. On any given day, the island nation experiences up to 50 tremors, although most of them are barely noticeable. Still, Japan has weathered some horrific earthquakes in the past, and it knows that will continue. To combat potential disasters, buildings are constructed on flexible, rubber-type platforms that absorb shocks when earthquakes occur. Every Japanese phone is equipped with a sensor that's automatically activated if an earthquake is imminent in the surrounding area. That gives people at least a few minutes to find somewhere to hunker down before the shaking. California has also introduced strict regulations regarding the construction of buildings and appropriate materials, and experts argue that they can do more. For example, critical sources of power such as overhead lines and telecommunication cables could be strengthened and supported by more effective backup systems. This won't be cheap, and it will take time to set up, but it's surely worth it. Property owners can take massive steps in the right direction by retrofitting their houses and their buildings. This basically means adding extra layers of protection to a structure, especially in weaker areas prone to giving away or collapsing. Schools and workplaces could introduce regular drills and awareness programs as they do in Japan so that when an earthquake actually occurs, people instinctively know how to respond. For now, it would seem that most Californians are crossing their fingers that the big one doesn't happen on their watch. That's reflected in the unusually low number of earthquake insurance premiums taken out by homeowners in the greater Los Angeles region. Insurance providers calculate that around 80% of people in Southern California still opt to go without earthquake insurance. It's probably because major earthquakes are seen as a once-in-a-lifetime occurrence, if that, and so not worth insuring against. And to be fair, those premiums are really expensive, so most insurance premiums cost almost $1,000 per year, and they come with a series of clauses and caveats. For many Californians, the memory of big earthquakes is still relatively fresh in their memories. The most recent deadly quake hit San Fernando Valley in 1994. Highways and buildings collapsed, and 60 people died. That 94 quake prompted city officials to get serious about reducing the damage for the next one. So new buildings were constructed with shake-proof materials, and older buildings started to be retrofitted. The good news is that there's still a lot that can be done to lessen the impact of a major earthquake. One thing that Californians might want to do is to avoid watching the earthquake disaster movie, the not so subtly titled San Andreas. In the film, cities are crushed by a massive tsunami that's brought on by a whopping 9.1 earthquake. Thankfully, this is very unlikely to happen, as tsunamis are generally created by plates colliding on a fault under the sea. Now, the San Andreas Fault is on land, which is a blessing of sorts. Californians are typically proactive and forward-thinking. The state's already working towards making sure it's equipped with the best tools to reduce damage for the big one. I mean, there's just... Like I said, it's the fifth largest economy in the world. There's just too much to lose. So it's time to prepare for tomorrow by starting today.